Here's a demonstration you can try at home. Uh, place a book against the wall and just very lightly put your hand against it. Of course it's gonna slide and fall. There's not enough friction between the wall and the book to keep it from falling down. There's no friction force back this way. In fact, there'd be zero friction force because there's no contact between the two. However, you can change the amount of normal force. You can make it so that the uh, wall pushes out on the book. Okay, so if you push in, if you take your hand and push in this direction, the book now pushes into the wall, and by Newton's third law, the wall pushes just as hard back on the book. That contact force we call the normal force. And there is definitely a coefficient of friction. This um, book cover and the wall is actually a pretty low coefficient of friction, but there is a non-zero coefficient of friction nonetheless. So, a coefficient of friction on its own does not create a force of friction. It needs to be coupled with some amount of normal force. The greater that normal force, the greater the friction force. So let's consider all the forces like a free body diagram, right? There's gravity this way, and we're talking about the forces acting on the book, not the forces acting on the wall. So on the book, gravity pulls down, the wall pushes out, and friction points up. The harder the normal force, the stronger the friction force. So we try to find what's the, what's the lightest push I can give into the wall, so therefore the wall pushes back on the book, that allow for enough frictional force. Too light and it slides. But you can feel that there's just a certain point. And the harder you go, well then, the greater the maximum amount of static friction that would be available and the more likelihood that it doesn't slide down. So there's a formula that describes all this. It says the force of static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by normal force. Okay, normal force is a vector, friction force is a vector. They don't actually point in the same direction. I guess the normal force points this way and the friction force points this way. So this is just an equation in magnitude. The magnitude of the static friction force, it could be as little as zero or as great as the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. And likewise, when something is sliding, the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu times n. Now, normal force, like any force, normal force is measured in newtons. Coefficient of friction is a unitless quantity. So when we multiply a dimensionless quantity times some number of newtons, we get some number of newtons. So friction force is a force, normal force is a force, and the coefficient is just a pure number. Let me demonstrate this a little further. Okay, so we want to see the role that um, both normal force and frictional force play in affecting, uh, I'm sorry, we want to see the role that coefficient of friction and normal force both play in the determination of the amount of frictional force. So here I've got fiberboard, cork, some kind of rubber, and then something like sandpaper or grip tape. So what's the coefficient of friction of wood on fiberboard? All right, I put my scale on, give it a pull, and the maximum force of friction before it slides is about one and a half newtons. Put it on the cork. Now the maximum force of friction goes just beyond two newtons. Put it on the grip tape. And as you would guess, the maximum force of friction I can provide is the greatest of all of them. It goes well beyond three newtons. And if I add weight to the top of the block, now that increases the normal force, and so I can probably get past three and a half newtons this time and approaching four newtons. Oh gosh, more than four and a half newtons. So it's not just the coefficient, it's not just the smoothness that affects the force of friction, the amount of normal force affects it as well. Less contact force, less friction force. 
You can try this with your own hand. Put your hand on the desk and go dead arm and pull your hand toward you. You can feel the amount of sliding friction. Take your hand and lean into it and push hard and try to pull your hand toward you and you can feel a greater force of friction. You haven't changed the coefficient of friction because it's flesh on desk regardless. But by going from a relaxed dead arm weight to an increased normal force, you get an increased friction force. We cannot escape the fact that frictional force depends largely on the amount of normal force, but also on how smooth or how rough the surfaces are.